Hi, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rose Kent, and this is the Midnight Reader. Pay no attention to the bags. <laughs> the haircut is schedules. Also, pay no mind to the bookshelf because it is still under construction. The parts that you can see look pretty good, but the rest of it is disaster. So it's not finished, but it will be soon. And then I'll show it to you. And then I could show you my new filming area. This is it. Just pretend that this didn't happen. It's fine. We had to do this today. It's been a hot second since I filmed a video. And that's mostly because I've been wildly busy and I have been working on my new home that I moved into, including being obsessed with becoming a amateur garden designer. Um, I'm sure you'll see that in later vlogs. I'm sure that I'm gonna manage to work that in. <laughs> a lot of my bookish projects and videos were shelved while I have been working on moving into and fixing up my new home. But I have come out of hiding specifically to deliver a bookish birthday present. So this gift is for my real life friend who I met through booktube. Her name is Jay. She is from the channel My Quarter Life Crisis. Jay has many passions in life, including writing, travel, fictional murderous women. But my personal favorite and what she describes as her red flag is her love for the straight white author from the Midwest, Kevin Wilson. Specifically what I'm gonna call her heart book, The Family Fang. And what I mean by heart book is a book that found her at the right place in life at the right time. We all have books like that that become something we hold close to us and become greater than the sum of their parts. And I think The Family Thing is that for Jay. The Family Thing is a story about a family of performance artists who specialize in kind of shock, public, subversive theater, which also incorporates their kids, referred to as Child A and Child B, whose names are actually Annie and Buster, respectively. And it follows their story and antics until later in life, the story takes a hard left turn and the parents go missing. And it's up to the now adult children to sift through the wreckage of their stagnant adult lives and figure out if their parents' uh, missing circumstances are actually nefarious or if it's all just another piece of shock value art. Now, Jay has already made me read The Family Fang. In fact, this is part of our origin story was when we slid into each other's comment sections talking mutually about how funny we thought we were. We decided to assign each other a couple of books to read and make some videos about that, which I can link below if you're interested in watching them. They're very good fun. And one of the books she of course assigned to me was one of her favorites, The Family Fang. And I read it and I really enjoyed it. And I thought it was this odd, quirky story that had an unusual amount of heart. So as a surprise birthday gift to Jay, I have spent the last few months secretly reading a bunch of books by Kevin Wilson. <laughs> now when I say secretly, I would like to point out that I have posted every single one of these to Goodreads, but I happen to know that Jay does not pay any attention to Goodreads, so I think I'm in the clear. <laughs> so this summer I read two full-length novels as well as one collection of short stories. I read Nothing to See Here and Now is Not the Time to Panic. And then the short story collection I read was called Baby You're Gonna Be Mine, which means that now I think I have only not read one novel by the author Kevin Wilson in a couple of short stories, but I have now read, I think, the bulk of his work, which means my present Jay, you and I can now chat at length about your favorite topic. <laughs> Kevin Wilson. But first, I'm going to give the lovely viewers who tuned in for this nonsense a quick synopsis of the books that I read, as well as some overall thoughts about the author himself. Now is Not the Time to Panic it features two teenage misfits, Frankie and Zeke, who in the summer at the age of 16 turn boredom and angst into art, specifically poster art. They use an ominous art style and the phrase, the edge is a shantytown filled with gold seekers. We are fugitives and the law is skinny with hunger for us. It's an interesting line. Do you know what it means? Not really, but I think that's kind of the point. So they paper the town with these posters, with this phrase and some art on it. And before long, it balloons into something well beyond their control. And the echoes of its repercussions follow them throughout their lives. And when I read this book and I read that line, I went, huh? because I've already read that line. The edge is a shanty town filled with gold seekers. That line is in The Family Fang. 
which was Kevin Wilson's first book. He literally used it already. <laughs> and it's not like a throwaway line. It's something that Buster, one of the main characters, kind of comes along and he uses that to help get him out of his writer's block. It's like a key moment in the story. It's not background noise. This line, uh, just a shanty town, gets repeated hundreds of times and now is not the time to panic. If you took out the line, I'm sure this book would be like 50 pages shorter. Like it's in there so many times and it gets weirder because I remembered Jay saying something about how it was in the family fang and she did a little research on it. And so I also looked up interviews with Kevin Wilson to remind myself of why he did that, of why he reused like a really specific line in a later book. And the story is this, KW, we're gonna call him KW now. When KW was in college, he had a truly boring job where he transcribed hospital policies and manuals into computerized versions. So he was essentially just inputting data. It's a super mind numbing job. So to keep himself from going insane, he would just pepper in random lines, sayings, whatever, into this manual, uh, like a little secret that he like tucked in there and no one ever noticed. So it was like this sort of fun thing that he did. And he was always looking for new things to put in there. And one of his friends at the time, I believe his name was Eric. KW had asked Eric, hey, you know, th can you think of anything I should put in there? And he gave him this line almost verbatim. Edge is a shanty town filled with gold seekers. And KW tweaked it by like two words to make it flow slightly better, but it's the same one. <laughs> and he put it in the hospital manual policies things. And then for the next like decade, the line really stuck with him and he just really wanted to put it into a book. And so he did, he put it in The Family Fang. But apparently that wasn't enough for him. <laughs> and in interviews, he has talked about being like obsessed with this line about having it in his life like a mantra. And so eventually he made a whole book about how these two kids, this town, and then eventually the world sort of become obsessed with the same line. My dude, that's top-notch obsession. Now the kind of sad part of this story is that he and his friend Eric had obviously, you know, had that summer friendship and then did what a lot of people do, which is they drifted apart and grew up and didn't really stay in touch. And while he was writing this book, one of his intentions that he mentioned in interviews was to kind of reconnect with his friend Eric. So he was aware that he was writing the book. He was aware that he was using the line. But tragically, Eric actually died before KW finished the book. It's so strange because that story is more about what the book is about. It's about how obsession and nostalgia for specific times in our life follows us and shapes our lives differently. It's about learning to let go of our ideas of who people are so that they can be happy with who they are now. It's about how art exists beyond personal ownership and intention. And it's just such a cool story. And that wasn't even my favorite book of the ones that I read. This was my favorite book. Nothing to see here. <laughs> Nothing to see here is about a lost 20 something named Madison, who in her teenage years covers for her boarding school best friend named Lillian by taking the fall for Lillian's extensive drug collection. <laughs> Madison's life continues to unfold in a disappointing failure to launch kind of way from the missed opportunities she was never able to capitalize on from losing that affluent boarding school life. So she's just kind of miserable and lost until one day out of the blue, Lillian approaches her with a job offer. Lillian has now married into old money, whose spouse is an aspiring politician. But there's just one little issue. Her husband's ex-wife has died, leaving her husband in the care of his two children. Well, they have a flair for spontaneous combustion. <laughs> They literally burst into flames. Now, as far as political careers go, this is not great for optics, which Lillian is very aware of. So she calls up an old friend who's good at keeping their mouth shut. Enter Madison, who accepts the job to come hide, fix, and mostly perform childcare 
have two feral combustible kids. It's so blackly funny and it has so many interesting nuances. Like Maddie is clearly in love with Lillian or at the very least in love with the idea of Lillian. The book marinates strongly on themes of wealth and power inequality and how the rules work differently for you if you have one or the other or both and the kids are two adorable feral terrorists who are also just kids who are afraid of the dark and so lonely and maybe it's because i'm a parent now but this book just crotch kicked me right in my lady emotions and i loved it Lastly, I read Baby, You're Gonna Be Mine, a collection of short stories. I really enjoyed the collection and I'm not a huge short stories person. I felt like it really showed off his penchant for black comedy and walking the tightrope of unease that permeates so many of his stories. My favorites included a story about a time traveling razor blade, a dead deer, and feral children, because it's on brand. <laughs> After reading three more works of Kevin Wilson's, I can say that all of his stories, both short and long, meditate on these themes of stuckness. Stuck in a career, stuck in a town, stuck inside. In his novels, his characters are always trying to get out. And I feel like they are so satisfying because often the way they are able to escape are in these infinitely small but ultimately heroic ways which makes them very satisfying to me. In his short stories I would say he likes more to turn the camera unflinchingly on his characters who can't get out, both on the beauty of the hope they have that they might eventually be able to do so despite their doomed attempts or just the tragedy of it all. He has a real flair for humor and voice and I would say if you have read one of his books and enjoyed his writing style, you would probably enjoy the rest of his novels and short stories as well because he's very consistent with the quality of his narrative voice. All of his books have a touch of the surreal and ultimately feel larger than life. Having read all these books by Kevin Wilson, I now conclude that he is indeed a white guy from the Midwest, specifically Tennessee, who writes extensively about the area in which he dwells. I think all of his stories took place in Tennessee. He harbors obsessive tendencies about abstract sentences, and I have decided that Jay, for your birthday, I'm gonna tell you that Kevin Wilson is not your red flag, simply because he is your type. Because if you were to describe another white, straight author from the Midwest who writes extensively about the place in which he dwells and harbors obsessions over abstract sentences, my girl, I think you'd probably be talking about John Green, who's also another one of your favorite authors. And so my friend, for your birthday, it is my obligation to tell you that it is not a red flag to love Kevin Wilson simply just have a type. <laughs> Happy birthday, Jay. I look forward to your call to discuss the many works of Kevin Wilson. Till next time, I do have some videos coming out. I do promise to be a little bit less garden obsessed or at the very least to film some of my garden obsessions. So there is actually content. There will be more videos. I am working on consistency, but I'm happy and this is what I got. So happy birthday, Jay. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all are well. Till next video, bye.